Goals versus wishes. Do you understand the difference between the two and how to affect each? This is the Think Your Reality Podcast, episode 31. Hang on, here we go. Your destiny is by your design. Getting what you want in your professional life is gained by following a series of steps created by your mindset. Are you ready to start the journey? This is the Think Your Reality Podcast. Here's Mike Sims. Hey, it's Mike Sims, and this is the Think Your Reality Podcast. Thanks again for joining me, and happy to have you here. So what is the difference between goals and wishes, and how do we achieve either? The fact is, they are very, very closely related, but what distinguishes the two of them from each other? Most wish for better income, better health, or the best career or calling suited for themselves. The goal is written out and includes a set of tangible steps to get there. Without those, the goals remain wishes. A wish may be too broad and undefined. As we discussed in previous episodes, your goals have to be audibly articulated a number of times daily in order for your subconscious mind to accept and act on them or act on you to act on them. It's been suggested that you do these in the morning and when you're about to go to bed. For some reason, the subconscious mind is more receptive at these two times during the day. If this creates an uncomfortable scenario for you, do it in private. I've walked out into my garage or done them while I'm in the car, but I do them daily because I won't ask you to do anything that I will not do myself. The fun realization occurs when you almost instinctively are working on your goals and dreams more than in times past and you're almost unaware of it. All of a sudden, your mind is focused on those things you spoke of having, and your mind finds the steps necessary to give you the very tangible steps toward those dreams and goals you asked for or said you wished to create. We're going to get into the science of success briefly. The reticular activation system, or RAS as it is sometimes referred, is located at the base of your brain or the brain stem. While it may be a fairly small part of your brain, the RAS has a very important role. It's the gatekeeper of information that is let into the conscious mind. It is uniquely suited to distinguish between relevant and unneeded pieces of information. Think about how much we get bombarded with on a daily basis between media, conversations, or advertisements. The RAS also plays an important role in motivation and goal setting pretty important for something tiny that's close to your brainstem. Audibly stating your goals is the way you can actually program your RAS to accept and bring about those things that are critical to you achieving your goals. You do, in fact, think your reality. This comes from the website medium.com. In the same way the RAS seeks information that validates your beliefs, those beliefs are changed by articulating your goals twice daily. It filters the world through the parameters that you have given to it. Your beliefs shape those parameters. If you think you're bad at giving speeches, you probably will be. If you believe you work efficiently, you most likely do. The RAS helps you see what you want to see, and in doing so, influences your actions. Some people suggest that you can train your RAS by taking your subconscious thoughts and marrying them to your conscious thoughts. They call it, quote unquote, setting your intent. And everything about your life has to have intent. This basically means that if you focus hard on your goals, your RAS will reveal the people, the information, and the opportunities that help you achieve them. This can and needs to be done twice a day, every day. Most people remember the frustration of not getting something right the first time. This stems back to when I was a kid. I remember it very well, but not fondly. However, what would you think if you didn't get it right the next 5,126 times? That's not an arbitrary number. That is exactly the number of failed prototypes that Sir James Dyson had after finally coming up with the bagless vacuum cleaner that now has a net worth of $4.5 billion. Let that sink in. When you articulate your goals, as we are discussing, you, you give your mind, your RAS, the needed instruction and belief that this is what you have commanded it to bring 
and it will work unwaveringly to bring about the tangible existence of what it was instructed to do by guiding your steps to people and situations needed for its creation. It's like setting your brain to autopilot. It is, in fact, controlling your mind, controlling your destiny and the world in which you have created for yourself. This comes from Medium.com. When you look at it this way, the law of attraction doesn't seem so mystical. If you focus on the bad things, you will invite negativity into your life. Focus on the good things and they will come to you because your brain is seeking them out. It's not magic. It's your reticular activating system influencing the world you see around you. So how much richer have you become in the fertile recesses of your mind when you do, in fact, think your reality? How liberating is it to know and understand now that you are in complete control of you, of your life, its destination, and the goals you want? Opening this floodgate, may I make a suggestion? What if you left pictures of things you wish to have, statements of inspiration around your workplace or home in an effort to take advantage of this newfound gold mine or goal mine? Personally, I have a picture of a a particular classic car that I wish to own on my desk. I also have two statements that I see every minute I sit down at my desk. One is, quote unquote, if you don't believe it, why should they? I do believe emphatically that what I love bringing to you is for the benefit of your goals being achieved. And the other one is, quote unquote, watch the choices you make. And this is just a reminder to me. This relates to me doing the research on my PC for podcast content. Emails and social media, while they have value, can be a tremendous deterrent to our successes. How many of us fall, quote unquote, into the fall into the rabbit hole, as it's described by watching videos? shopping, or generally spending too much time doing non-productive activities. If this is you, we now know how we can correct it. Our choices have consequences. The world around you is desperate for your gifts to be realized and brought to life. Please, I ask you, don't deny us, yourself, or your family. Your goals need to be achieved for your own benefit, for the benefit of people around you, for your family. My name is Mike Sims. This is the Think Your Reality Podcast. And as I always say, you have an absolutely awesome day as you deserve nothing less.